G'day scrappers, welcome to part two of this mega scrap marathon, biggest in the history of television. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, continuing from the last video where I said I had to go and do another pickup, well, this is the stuff that I got. Um, it's a little bit different to what I normally get. Normally these tubs are full of just cable mostly. Um, but in this case, I uh, this tub's mostly the Cisco Cisco uh, router things. Um, I've done hundreds of these over the years, <laughs> over the last couple of years anyway. So uh, not sure what I'm going to do with them because they're a bit fiddly. They're quite time consuming uh, for the value, but they are mostly all aluminium. Uh, so I'll just decide. I can also got the option to just sell them to my buyer. Uh, got a couple of these uh, Ethernet uh, Wi-Fi kind of systems, or whatever they are. Um, you know, I've done the big versions, and there's not a great deal in them. There might be a board, and uh, it's mostly yeah, cast aluminium. So I might scrap a couple of these out um, through this marathon, this part anyway, and. Uh, yeah, if they're easy enough and so I did get some cables here but mostly what's underneath here is uh, um, it's mostly laptops just uh, the laptops that he can't resell so and out of all the laptops that I brought him if you watched the last video um, only three were rejected so everything else sold um, so that was pretty good ended up getting you know, about 1600 bucks for that batch that you uh, might have saw at the end of uh, part one of this marathon so there you go that's what i'm talking about you know quick and easy still getting good money let him um you know play around from and try and sell them and uh, he can make his money i've got this old school digital video recorder um i say old school because it's got a still got a floppy so it'd be interesting to see the motherboard in this um, it might even be loaded with some hard drives, but uh, yeah, just just inter interesting to see uh, what kind of motherboard and CPU is in here. So yeah, but yeah, I did get a, a decent batch of cable, but as I said, two thirds of this bin is full of laptops. There's probably about 40 or 50 laptops, just scrap laptops. So obviously. Um, and so, all right, let's uh, start this marathon off. And before I start scrapping those switches and everything, I've just got to get rid of this again, just like in the last video, but I won't put it on video. Um, I'm just going to throw all these into the uh, back of the van and take them to the scrapyard. All these uh, dirty pressing uh, printers. And then also at the same time, I'm going to also take these boxes away. So I'll clear up this space and I'll uh, process all this, just sort it all out into their areas and we'll get scrapping, hey? Let's continue on with this uh, mega scrap marathon. Okay, let's make a little start here, eh? Finally. <laughs> just want to uh, get rid of as much of this... Um, these switches as I can and so first up we've got a couple of Cisco's I think Yeah, so it's uh, <laughs> it's certainly uh, been super busy and as per usual, as soon as I start up a, a marathon to get rid of a whole heap of stuff, 
I get a whole heap of stuff come in. Uh, maybe uh, I should just continually start scrap marathons so uh, the work just keeps coming in because it's just every single time and uh, you know it's it's a good thing it means that you know I'm making a bit of money anyway uh, first one for the day as usual always a bit clumsy so power board and some of these will have uh, small screws that are too small for the uh, the PH2 that I've got and you know for a couple of months every time I go to a different hardware store I look for PH1 um, extended Phillips and none of them sell them they, they just they all got PH2 so I finally found found them online so I bought a couple so they should come next week it just sort of speeds up a little for me when um, especially doing switches and stuff sometimes the the sc uh, screws are just too small so I've got to do them all by hand and I'd rather not Wow That's a nice Cisco. Even after I scrap these out, I, I take off the fans so I can um, turn it into a, a clean pressing steel. Even though this part here, I might have to take off the plastic, but yeah. Just need a... I really need an in-between flathead screwdriver, but I just can't get into the garage to <laughs> to um, find one. So uh, this one's good enough. This big flat screwdriver I've actually filed, sharpened the blade a little bit because I use it for depopulating, taking off tant tantalum capacitors and stuff. Uh, it works a bit better when it's a bit sharpened so so we're still in uh, lockdown and uh, you know as far as the the figures are concerned it's it's not getting any better it's actually getting worse and worse every day um, and so whilst I was hoping if it would get better where they would sort of relax a little bit um, not the case so unfortunately I uh, it's best that I I don't go out street scrapping um, again this weekend you know and I'm missing out on on the probably the best area we've got but uh, well once again hopefully next week it'll uh, start to quieten down a bit and I'll get out there but uh, eventually I'll get out there street scrapping but you know it is a blessing in disguise because uh, it's just allowing me to try and get on top of all this sort of stuff just get this power supply out so it's a, it's actually a, a really nice day today, winter's day, it's 17 degrees Celsius. Um, so it's nice and you know reasonably warm and sunny and uh, nice breeze. So it's good. Okay. 
So, I might actually just clean up the wires later when I take out the... Uh, uh, <coughs> I might just leave this one as dirty pressing. Since it's got the plastic on the front. But yeah, this Cisco board looks really impressive. Look at that one. How's that? Now that's uh, what we call telecom grade board. So yep, yeah, it came out of a telecom type system, but they're not always telecom. Um, like the first Cisco that I took out, uh, it's close. This would also be close, close it classed as a telecom board. Uh, but this one definitely, because look at all those chips. Really nice, you know, two, three, four, five, Nice BGAs, Cisco ones, you know, nice flat packs. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. Probably got some good MLCCs here. Uh, might be good for Palladium. Yeah, that, that's, that's why we all love our Cisco stuff. All right. This one's a 3Com. We'll check it out. <clears throat> All right. So whereas this board here, not as populated, so you know it's going to uh, go as a, a server grade board. So just a little bit less. There's not a real big difference between server grade and telecom grade here. Um, my price is, I think there's only uh, 80 cents a kilo difference. So it's not the end of the world, you know. Once it hits server grade, they're, they're, it's all pretty good. So, after that second pickup that I just did, I've already sort of sorted out one of the, uh, the tubs. So that's good. Got a few extra interesting things to uh, have a look at and scrap out, which is also good. Also been cutting quite a lot of cords <laughs> that have uh, just just came in in the last pickup, last couple. Okay, so But yeah, as I mentioned in part one of this video, uh, this series, that uh, switches have been unbelievable this year. I've never gotten so many switches. Um, you know, in half a year, I've gotten more switches than I've almost, you know, gotten in two years. <laughs> so, it's uh, really weird, strange, but... Geez, I'm not complaining. I love my switches. Bring it on, as far as I'm concerned. Like, you know, when I go and do a pickup, you know, I scan the job and I think, you know, if I see switches, I think, yeah, they're up. That's a good start. Yeah, so this board here, uh, 
it uh, doesn't really have much good stuff on it. It does have a couple of gold band crystal oscillators that I might pinch, maybe a couple of tantalums, but yeah, I'd uh, be happy to get server grade ball for that. All right. Well, if I can, uh, you know, at least get these two batches done, um, and then I'll start moving on to uh, probably some PCs, uh, maybe some, might uh, get some servers out the way. What do we got here? Another three com. <coughs> well, less and less. So three com aren't that spectacular. Yeah, just getting them. They're pretty small. I would have liked my PH1 bit and what I'm going to do is since I've got the the screwdriver version as well I'm going to put the PH1 onto the screwdriver version and just have uh, two drills going before I uh, wear out this tip because it's too big for this I'll do the rest by hand So the first part of this marathon probably went a little bit longer than I thought it was going to go. I didn't expect it to go for nearly three hours, uh, so probably uh, I'll probably just reduce them up a little bit. Um, I still have just as much content, but just probably over uh, more videos rather than, you know, Three hours, you know, it is too long. Um, you yeah, know, obviously a lot, you know, if you say, oh, it's not too long more. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I've also got to look at the bigger picture, you know, and sort of keep, um, keep everyone sort of interested. And uh, when I get new subscribers, new people looking at my channel, if, you know, they see, geez, three hour videos. I mean, no one's really got three hours time to, to watch a video all in one go. Most of the viewers of these scrap marathons, they watch it in stages. So, you know, a little bit every day or so, you know, watch half maybe, come back to it another day, that kind of thing, rather than just sitting Believe me, I, I know uh, what it's like to sit uh, through uh, hours of video because it's how, how long it takes me to actually scrap stuff. Uh, sorry, to, uh, to actually uh, edit these videos. Um, <laughs> if I make a three hour video, I've probably watched four hours of uh, footage. So, no matter how interesting the video is, it starts to get a bit, bit of, uh, you know, messes with your head a bit, you know, just, I suppose it's, it's just like watching too much television, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but when new people come along and see my videos like this, you know, they must think, jeez. Do people actually sit and watch three hour long videos? Because a lot of people are used to watching two minute videos or, you know. Um, yeah, so this is uh, pretty, pretty basic. Obviously it's got a heat sink, so obviously, you know, we've got ICs underneath, but yeah, glad to get just rid of that as a server.
What's that? A little Cisco modem. WAN modem. Uh, quite, quite cool. I like my Cisco's. Just got a tub for um, uh, all these boards. When I uh, go to depopulate, when the tub fills up, I'll start. Just uh, I like to go through them before I send them off for resale. Pick off a couple of little things, uh, just for my own little thing. Uh, if they're awesome, like the telecom one. Usually with telecom boards, uh, because they've got so much stuff on them, I prefer to just pretty much depopulate the whole thing. Not worry about uh, trying to uh, sell it as a board. Okay. So, oh well, it's a little Cisco board, you know, just like a modem kind of board it's it's only uh, a mid-grade but this one's strange Okay. Just got to remove the battery on that. Cisco again. Oh, it's the uh, 80, uh, 800 series. These can be okay. Um, if I can remember. virtually the whole size of it is a, is a board you know again it's not the most spectacular board um, in these 800 series but three really nice gold band crystal oscillators so you know they're the things that I, I like to get um, I've mentioned before uh, these things are very much like a ceramic CPU pound for pound they're as good as any CPU the only thing is it takes a lot to get a pound <laughs> But, still, the way uh, gold is going at the moment, and, yeah, gold recovery stuff, you know, and I've done a couple of uh, stockpiling bits for gold recovery, you know, and, well, since those videos, you know, gold has gone up quite a bit. Uh, certainly gone up a lot in Australia because of the Australian dollar. Like a thousand dollars an ounce more. So my theory is correct, or was correct at that time, is yeah, don't worry about going for gold recovery right now, you know, processing stuff and then selling your gold. You know, it's not going anywhere. So just keep accumulating until you're not going to uh, be accumulating anymore and um, yeah it's not going anywhere we know how much gold is in there and even if you never uh, recover gold yourself from e-waste well like I said we know what's in there so uh, just uh, sell it as what it is and uh, yeah, it, uh, I mean, go out and try and buy gold. It's it's not easy, and uh, the premium that uh, dealers are charging are, are just really high. 
and even for like one ounce gold coins um, simply because there's just not enough stock out there here in Australia anyway um, it's yeah so But I don't recommend buying gold uh, as like uh, allocated gold, you know, so where you buy it from a, a gold dealer, but you don't actually get the gold. You're just kind of like, you know, investing in it and they keep it. I don't, I, I don't recommend that. The only gold worth investing in is the gold that you actually got in your hand. And the same with silver, you know. Um, if you're gonna invest in it, make sure you're investing in physical silver, not not, not uh, pie in the sky, uh, someone else is holding it for you. <laughs> Because in those circumstances, you can never turn it into gold, really, anyway. Because if you want to cash in, they just give you the money. And then go try and buy the gold. Uh, when gold is hot, it's really hard to buy. But, scrapping e-waste... Well, there's, uh, we know there's uh, plenty of gold in e-waste, and um, yeah, to me, it's the best kind of gold to get, because it just takes a little bit of work, and um, you know, although it's technically not free, um, technically it kind of is free. Because uh, if you're selling uh, the rest of the stuff that you're getting, circuit boards and that, all the things that you pick off, it's, uh, to me, it's a bonus, you know? And <clears throat> For a lot of scrappers, they're uh, um, probably going to be in it long term. So there's no rush to sell your stockpile. Uh, You know, you're, these days we don't get many ceramic CPUs and that, so uh, that's unfortunate. But uh, for everything else, if you just partially depopulate boards, or even if you completely depopulate, like that, you know, to completely depopulate, uh, it's, it's so so whether you're going to get as good value as you would just selling it. You know, I'd rather just like take off that gold band crystal oscillator, um, some MLCCs and, and maybe a couple of chips and still get mid-grade board for it, but battery. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> Not much there, is it? What, what brand is this? Let's shame them. TP Link. Wow. I, I, no doubt it still does what it's meant to do, but my gosh. Probably get more value in the steel than the boards. So there's certainly nothing to populate off this board. Look at this power board, just a little transformer, a few little capacitors, not much there. Uh, 
And that, well, just happy to get mid-grade board for this. Uh, <laughs> only two chips on it. This part is super heavy, so um, not a good value one for the buyers. But, well, they've got to win, you know, win some and lose some. Yeah. <clears throat> I get a lot of these grey colour three comms, heaps of them for some reason. But yeah, for some reason, they make the boxes really heavy steel, like, um, same size, like, as a DVD. These boxes probably weigh seven or eight times more than a DVD player in a box. Uh, quite amazing. Um, so this one is nothing spectacular. Sometimes these grey ones can be good. Um, you know what? Got a little bit of brass. Oh, yeah. I remember this model. Just got the long gold pins here. So it's just a mid grade board. And, you know, all I do. pieces but yeah you get the picture I'll do that later okay I'm actually feeling a a little lazy today uh, maybe it's just uh, because it's uh, quite a warm day compared to what we've been getting um, so a little bit sleepy but it is uh, um, the end of the week anyway for me and I've had a really busy week you know I've I think I've done three scrap metal runs, uh, sent boards off, done some big pickups. Uh, oh. <clears throat> I've certainly earned my pennies this week. Oh, well, at least it's a nice power board. Unfortunately, we don't. I don't get much for power boards, and so you know, I keep telling people that bring me power boards to sell to me you're much better off trying to take off a little bit of value for yourself you know copper coil you know maybe a couple of transformers some aluminium you know if you've got time you're much better off getting a bit more value you know uh, when it comes to low-grade boards uh, as long as there's still something on the board of value uh, I don't mind what you take off it doesn't affect the value because the value is so low anyway. It's only when you start playing with uh, uh, mid-grade and up is when it can be, a, you know, can affect the value that you're getting. And so uh, these risers, some, I mean, obviously they're yellow, they look brass, but sometimes they can be tricky and they can be steel. Um, We don't want steel. Definitely brass, good. If you uh, if you could just fill up a bucket just of these kind of risers, I tell you what, I challenge anyone to lift the bucket <laughs> because you know these are really heavy, you know, solid solid brass, and uh, yeah, this I love them.
So once again, um, very, very basic. Obviously you've got to take off these, these plastic things. Um, yep. Uh, this one, you know what? It's probably not even good enough to go as a server. This would be a mid grade because there's just not enough on there. Um, it's all dead weight. These are dead weight. This is all dead weight. Um, not much on there, but yeah, what do you do? You know, so me, I might just take off one of these flat packs, take off a, a crystal and then throw it in mid grade, you know. Can't win them all. All right, well. Ah, I might do another Cisco. So yeah, I'm not gonna do all of these switches on video. Um, I'm just gonna continue on. And once I finish them, then I've still gotta clean up all this steel. So it might take me uh, quite some time to get all the mundane stuff done. So uh, low grade board, it's on a steel plate. You've really gotta take it off this steel plate. Okay, um, because yeah, when you're buying boards, that's all you're really buying. You're not buying, um, you know, excess steel. So I just got to keep mentioning it because I do get a lot of people bring me stuff like that, and you know, and because low grade is so you know low value as it is, it's just not worth playing around with. Um, or even handling, you know, uh, so if you don't have time to take off that steel, well, just throw the whole thing into pressing steel or something. So this one's not the best Cisco we've gotten, but um, still might be able to get away with it being a, a server grade board. Yeah, it's close. It's to me, it's more more of a mid grade, but. Sometimes, you know, balances out. <clears throat> yeah, I oh, will still get away with it. Has a couple of uh, gold band crystal oscillators. So, that's for me, and the rest is for my buyer. These uh, Nortel networks. Uh, there's so many different uh, brands and models of switches. It's it's just amazing. It's, uh, I'm surprised that all of the companies can stay in business. Oh. Yeah, just average. I think I might have already done this one. <coughs> And once again, when you're cutting off cable like that, you can get away with leaving the plug in the low grade board, but the mid grade board, you've got to take, bring it to me, you've got to take that plug out, right? 
because uh, that's that's not mid grade. Um, but on low grade, that's fine. You can get away with it. A lot of screws in this one, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, again, with these low grade boards, because they're so low value here for me, they you know really are a power board, they should be a little bit more, but uh, I don't have a grading for power boards to separate them from low grade. But you know, see this little copper coil here with the ferrite bead, you know, even if you just take that you're getting some, you know, a little bit better value than selling it as uh, on a uh, low-grade board. You know, especially if you're into uh, stockpiling copper, you know. And so we've got this, you know, nice chunky bit of copper wire. It's not much, but hey, it adds up. And then this ferrite piece can put this into clean pressing steel. So we're still getting um, for that steel close to what the value of this um, this low grade board is anyway, and then we're getting a copper for free. So you know, it's just uh, yeah. I'd rather people depopulated all this than bring them to me because they're so low valued. They're too low value to even handle. You know, like this transformer here. Okay, I just you know crushed off the uh, ferrite surrounding it okay so that's just dirty pressing but see now we've exposed some good copper and you know it's all about time if you've got the time to do this sort of thing you're going to get much better value when it comes to low grade than selling them to me or anyone else so I'm kind of saying. But, you know, some pr scrappers just prefer to, you know, just throw it in a bin and uh, into a low-grade tub and move on. Um, if you're getting too much stuff or, you know, depending on, on what you're, you're uh, into, um, for a lot of scrappers, they'd rather be spending that a little bit extra time out there picking stuff up, you know. Because, um, like today, you know, I could have been out there street scrapping. And for every day I'm not out there street scrapping, there's things that I'm missing out on. There could have been something that, you know, might have been really good. But, so it's like that for, for every scrapper. If you're just in the workshop processing stuff, um, what are you missing out on when you're you're not out there, you know? So it is a, a quite a good board. This definitely goes as a server grade. It's got a really big BGA here. Um, but yeah, again, gold band crystals. And uh, yeah, I'll just clean it up. Nice, heavy, get good value for that one. Well, I'm starting to get a bit of a pile of uh, s switch boxes down on the ground. <laughs> um, what's this? Uh, three com again, super stack. And that's a smaller one. I've got a bigger one up there. Just have a look at this one, and then uh, we'll call the switches session over and uh, we'll continue on with something different this one just wants to be a bit awkward and it's a bit awkward for me because I'm sort of sitting on on the edge um, beside the camera uh, stand and uh, it's uh, it's not the easiest positioning to scrap 
So normally I'm not as awkward. So I'm just trying to squeeze in. <laughs> I got four inches this way and six inches this way. Space. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, it's quite pretty. Um, no BGAs, just uh, nice big flat packs. Okay, so with all those uh, switches out the way, uh, this one I just picked up from the, the recent pickup, so I thought I might as well get this out the way. It's a nice big box. It's an old school uh, digital, um, digital video recorder. Um, yeah, I call it old school because it's first one I've actually seen with uh, actually a floppy in it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what the motherboard is like in this. Basically, D DVRs are pretty much like a PC. PC. Um, but yeah, I thought, well, it might be interesting. Certainly the oldest DVR that I've ever, um, that I can recall ever getting. Okay, oh yeah. Well, they certainly built it nice and robust. And, uh, it's got uh, old school uh, CD player. It's got two hard drives, one RAM. It's got three cards. Looks like a back plane. And uh, yeah, it might be just a green fiber CPU. We'll have a little look. Give me a bit more room. Okay, so yeah, a couple of older school hard drives, it's a, I finished off the uh, switches yesterday, uh, new day, and uh, it's actually a very nice, beautiful winter day. I think um, here, when we have nice winter days, they're probably my favorite um, days or times of year because it's just, uh, it's, it's just warm enough so it's not cold, sun shining. Um, but you're still able to, you know, go about and do your thing. Speaking of going about and doing your thing, actually, um, this lockdown caper we've uh, today we've just been uh, just gotten new announcement, and tomorrow there's going to be another announcement for people with businesses and stuff. So I'll be interested in in that, but. Um, now we're really starting to get into the the hardcore kind of uh, lockdown stuff. Um, what they've announced today is uh, we can't go. Um, you can only go shopping by yourself. Only one person at a time can go shopping, and you can only shop within five kilometres of your your uh um of your house so uh which is i don't know i can't remember what five kilometers is in miles it's uh um i think about three miles so you can't go any further than three miles from your house if you want to go if you have to go shopping and um <laughs> Well, it gets even better, but and what the uh, police are doing is 
for cars you know that are driving around as the police are driving around they're actually scanning your rego you know your your registration number and it shows them where that vehicle is registered at where you where your house is so if it comes up that uh, you're more than three miles or five kilometers from home that vehicle is more than five kilometers from its the registered house then they'll pull you over and uh, make sure that uh, you know well they'll pull you over and try and give you a a nice big fat fine of about 1600 bucks so uh, yeah it's it's <laughs> it's all happening it's an old power supply so that's one of the the new things five kilometers from home uh, but here's here's a funny one um, <laughs> as far as just going out for exercise <laughs> I found this really funny because the rules are if you go out for exercise you're allowed one hour of being outside right so it's um, from watching movies and stuff you know when people are in prison um, especially you know like your hardcore prisoners they're stuck in their cells for 23 hours a day and they're only allowed out one hour a day for fresh air well that's exactly what's happening here um, you can't leave your home and you're allowed out for one hour a day to get fresh air have a little uh, walk or or <laughs> whatever so how's that it's it's like prison it really is and I knew this was coming it's just uh, insane uh, amazing how they can uh, you know have power over people to to do that say no you can't go anywhere um, after you know just for one hour you can go outside and then you have to go back in and obviously when you're outside you've got to wear a mask otherwise that's another 200 bucks um, strange and they've even got the military involved as far as uh, those people that have been tested positive they have to uh, lock down for two weeks which is fair enough if you've actually been tested positive um, so what the military are doing is they're actually visiting those people's homes to make sure that they're home and so the police aren't doing that anymore it's the actual military and uh, I'm not sure of the outfit that they're wearing when they're coming to people's homes they've probably got you know uh, machine guns and uh, anti-assault rifles and <laughs> who knows it's strange you know so it's real you know almost coming up to like martial law um, and this is just for a virus I don't know um, <laughs> right at the start when it all started you know I did say you know uh, what's going to be interesting from all this is um, the rules and the laws that they put in place and so far it's proven correct that they're the laws are uh, they're just making them up as they go and yeah it's just it's just amazing um, you know I mean I'm not complaining because I would like to see this virus end because it's getting worse and worse and 
shush. You know, I, it, it is affecting my business, and I'm just waiting for tomorrow to hear what, how businesses are going to be affected because, you know, if I've got to go out and do pickups, you know, I have to still do that. I need work. I don't want to uh, stop everything and go on bloody welfare or something. Um, I don't want anything to do with that. Stuff them. I'd rather make less uh, than the people earning welfare than uh, going through all that rubbish and making uh, the government feel like they're doing me a favour. I'll, uh, I'll go about it myself. And uh, yeah, as thought, green fibre CPU from 2000. And there's our little motherboard. Yeah, good heavy one. These ones with the uh, plastic uh, CPU sockets. They're about the best ones as far as gold recovery in motherboards. Um, so, all I want now, really, is this DVD CD player. So, yeah, interesting times. And, gosh... Hopefully it doesn't get worse because I don't know what else they they can really do. Uh, you know, you're allowed out one one hour a day. I mean, what's the option after that? You can't step outside at all. Um, you know, what do they do? Does the military come to every house and put up uh, barricades and barbed wire and? I don't know, or or do they, you know, could it go as far as uh, you all have to go into our little concentration camps, FEMA camps or whatever, you know, it's for your own good, and uh, we'll lock you all up in there and uh, until the virus, you know, is over, uh, <laughs> who knows? And you know the way they're going, they got they got power to do anything. You know they can mix and match laws as they go. So imagine that, and then they say, "Yep, you all go in, and you all get tagged. We'll put a little silicon chip inside you, and uh, you know in your skull or something. Because if they just put it in your hand, people would cut off their hands." <laughs> uh, and yeah, they'll microchip everyone and load them up with, uh, you know, some sort of vaccines, and and then and then once they got everyone there, <laughs> then it's like, oh, yeah, you can't actually go home anymore. You know, uh, wherever you live, we've set up new areas where everyone's got to. Uh, you know, build a new home <coughs> somewhere where they can continue to uh, control the situation. I don't know. I'm just having a bit of fun with it because, geez, you gotta, you gotta, because. <laughs> uh, You can't let this sort of stuff get to you. You know, apparently, you know, there are people that uh, are really down and out because of lockdown and they're, they're not handling it well. Um, you know, just got to be strong and uh, persist. You know, end of the day, we'll survive and everything will be good. And, uh, yeah, just don't let the situation get to you, you know. 
And yeah, like I said, uh, I'd love for this virus to be over as quick as possible. And if this is what it takes, well, this is what it takes. We'll, um, you know, if this, if this is going to go on for six weeks again. So we've already been in lockdown for two weeks, the second stage of lockdown. And so now we're in, uh, I don't know if they're calling this stage three lockdown. I'm not sure. All right, well, that was the DVR, not bad, you know, got a little motherboard, got uh, three cards and a RAM, the back plane board. All right, oh, and a couple of hard drives. Okay, I think I might do a server next, so let's go and do that. Okay. Just got a few of these oddball servers just in my way at the moment. I've got heaps of servers around, but uh, these ones are just under my feet virtually, so get rid of these. And yeah, uh, oh, I actually got a message earlier on today, a bit of a heads up that um, there was going to be more restrictions and stuff going on. So um, and apparently Meatworks are going to be uh, closing down. A lot of our Meatworks have been affected by the virus, so a lot have closed down, but Apparently, what my friends told me is that there are going to be uh, a lot more and meat is going to be start to get very scarce. He said, so you should go out and get yourself whatever meat you need um, before it's too late. So I did. I went out and tried to get some meat. Um, I had to go to a butcher shop first, like a big butcher wholesaler and then uh, I went to the supermarket well the supermarket was almost out already um, so I guess I wasn't the only one that got a heads up so yeah I think I I just made it I've already been shopping once this, this week done grocery shopping so um, I wasn't expecting to go back out to get it but I'm glad I did now. Apparently even uh, KFC have started to close up a lot of stores temporarily because they can't get enough chicken. <laughs> How's that? So I'm just uh, keeping an eye on my chickens overnight in case Colonel Sanders sneaks in, jumps the fence and tries to get my chickens for his buckets. <laughs> yeah, it's all fun and games, I tell ya. But, you know, hopefully we'll come through. The good thing is, even though it doesn't matter how heavy in lockdown we're at, I've got a you know big job ahead of me. I've got a lot of stuff to do. I just hope that... Um, I don't run out of completely before it's over. Hopefully I get a couple of jobs, uh, at least one a week, just to uh, keep the stocks up. Otherwise, yeah, <laughs> I won't have anything else to do but make YouTube videos and annoy everyone on YouTube. <laughs> All right, well, at least we've got four Rams on this. So this should keep me going. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, they're only uh, there. Well, they're two gigs, but I've mentioned before server RAM, unless it's like eight gigs, doesn't sell much here. But you know, we've got one of these AMDs. Yeah, nice gold pins. All right, so server board. Well, it's actually. Again, technically this is not a server board, even though it came out of a server and it was operating as a server. It's only got one uh, CPU socket, 
So technically this is just a PC motherboard, okay? So I know it's confusing, hey, how come it's, it's been operating as a server? And uh, you know, if you looked up part numbers and that, it'll probably say server board, but that's just not what we grade server boards as. There's, uh, to tell you the truth, there's not much value in them as it is. So, whether they've got one or two sockets, but, well. So, we do have, yeah, I could almost clean it out. turn this whole cavity into a clean pressing but I might not and uh, I'll just use these as uh, to fit power plugs and more rubbish All right, well, this one was pretty simple, straightforward. Just another one out the way. Look at the size of the box, you know, just to uh, make it seem like things are really going down. I'm not going to bother with this little back plane board. There's not much to it. I might just slide out. I'll have to take off. So, yeah, um, I'm interested to know how everyone else is going in their neck of the woods as far as lockdown is concerned. <coughs> How's your area going? Uh, what stage are you at? And uh, are you allowed to go outside for more than an hour? <laughs> uh, and, yeah, most importantly, you're keeping yourself busy and your family busy and happy um, that's that's kind of the main thing um, uh, staying uh, mentally fit can be more important than being physically fit temporarily because yeah, eventually you can just go out and um, do some exercise but you don't want to get yourself in a bit of a rut with you know your head space so you know if you are having a hard time with uh, this pandemic then you know talk about it you know speak with people around you and anyone Even with people in the comment section of YouTube, you know. Um, that's the best way. Because for a lot of people, they're not used to being locked down and cooped up and stuff like that, you know. Um, for me, well, I don't really go out much anyway. Um... You know, I can still do the things that I need to do, like I can still go shopping, and I can still uh, do my business. So it's no real difference to me. That's that's my life anyway. I'm I'm just cooped up here working every day. But for some people that are used to going to work and you know going to a bar or going to restaurants, you know, it must be uh, a little bit harder to. Uh, to um, handle at the moment, so just go and get scrapping. That's what it's all about. Yeah. 
the uh, <coughs> uh, one of the quotes in uh, Shawshank Redemption. You know, get busy living or get busy dying or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a top movie. I mean, I've seen it probably ten times already. Um, all right. Well, that's one serve down. I've got three more there under my feet that I'm, I'm going to continue. So I'm going to clean up. I'm going to fill this cavity with uh, power plugs and stuff and just throw it into a dirty pressing, this one. Okay. Well, we'll check out what this one's all about. All right, well, this is more like it. We do have a dual socket um, motherboard here, which is a good start. Uh, all this, this is one of those with cable kind of running all the way through. They're a little bit harder to get, uh, to get it all out, but we get there. I think no. maybe maybe not. I'm just wondering if we can get out this central plate, it'd make things a lot easier. But That wasn't too bad. Yep, I like these ones with the the actual gold pins. These are like twenty times better gold recovery than than your stuff like this. Sometimes there's virtually nothing, but sometimes they are good, especially in the older PCs. lot of cable in this one, I tell ya. Which is good. That's what it's all about. Should be able to clean this one up and get clean steel. And I'll just throw these fans into the dirty steel. All right. Nice heavy power supply with lots of cable. All right, let's get to these CPUs. Nice copper heat sinks. Oh, just what we want. Solid copper heat sinks. Awesome.
that's that weighs over a pound well over that's nice prefer to do these ones anyway on the spot rather than just putting them aside and I'll get to them later because it just adds up as another job and um, I'm feeling pretty relaxed today I'm not going I'm not trying to go really super hard um, just go for the motions this one's st stuck on nice Two CPUs, gold. All right, well that's good. Four RAM sticks, two on each side. Good, nice heavy ones. Heavier the better. <laughs> that goes for pretty much all scrap, you know. It's all about the weight and motherboard is a nice big one so that's good too so really good value at this server heavy power supply two cpus four ram Almost three pounds of copper. Big motherboard. And a lot of cable. Be nice if they were all kind of like that. Especially with the copper heat sinks. <laughs> My favourite. All right. Nice. And a good one too because it's got the plastic, white plastic um, CPU slots. So it means it's a, a higher value. And, you know, I can see you know, nice big BGAs there. Probably under there. I want that little gold band crystal oscillator. Oh yeah, BGA's at the side. Good value. All right, well, I'll just clean this one up and I'll go on to something else. Okay, I'll just get rid of another server. Just uh, so many of them at the moment. I just want to uh, reduce the uh, volume of the the stuff that I've got, but uh, yes, I'll do a couple of interesting bits, I suppose, after this, and um, then go on to just stacks of PCs, I think. To, uh, Yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm uh, a bit overwhelmed with all this stuff that's going on and it's just, um, yeah, quite amazing. Um, just, yeah, just what's happening and well, We've had the announcements for the businesses and stuff, and so a lot of, um, yeah, a lot more meat works is closed, so definitely uh, short on meat. <laughs> um, luckily, I, I got that heads up, and I stocked up on what I probably need. Um, yeah. 
it's just uh, yeah a little bit crazy um, so now we're in we're actually in stage four lockdown and they call it they're calling it at the moment a state a state of disaster <laughs> how's that nice little uh, ram caddy four little ram sticks they're only one gigabytes but nice fingers heaps of tantalums get some uh, bit of value out of that only one CPU on this just a regular aluminium oh well one CPU is better than none got these little cards don't mind them it's just because it's got such a lot of aluminium on it um, it's just a, a really it's just a mid-grade board even though it does have gold fingers it's not really a slot card um, because it doesn't really have much on it uh, it's more like a riser card so I suggest just take off these fingers and uh, yeah still throw it in mid-grade if that's uh, your thing so as well as uh, us can only go out for one hour for exercise uh, they're really uh, pushing today for those people that um, are in isolation because they've been um, they've been diagnosed with the virus uh, they they actually can no longer even go out for exercise they have to stay indoors at all times 24 hours and yeah I think they call it you know a state of disaster that way I'm pretty sure it changes up the uh, the laws it's quite a nice intense slot card actually two gold band crystals big chunky tantalum yeah so yeah state of disaster they can pretty much probably I think they can pretty much do anything and uh, so fines are getting heftier um, for those people that are meant to be in uh, isolation if they get caught it's two thousand dollar fine or no it's gone up now to five thousand dollar fine <laughs> just changes every day and uh and they're already sort of warning you know they're saying i oh, for those that get five thousand dollar fine if you uh f fight it in court you're probably gonna you're gonna get a twenty thousand dollar fine so You know they're they they're covering all bases there. You know people are probably saying, "Oh, I'll fight this in court." Well, now they're saying, "Yeah, no worries." Now they're threatening twenty thousand dollar fine. <laughs> um, but a lot of businesses have. <laughs> it actually starts from uh, tomorrow. A lot of businesses have to close up. And so even like hardware stores, you can only buy click and collect unless you're a tradie. So um, and it wouldn't surprise me if they start doing that with supermarkets as well, where you can no longer go in. Um, give it a few days. They'll uh, set that up as well. So this one I want to uh, clean up and turn this into a clean steel box. <laughs> Simply because I don't have any more loose stuff to throw in. I might as well just get better value for it. Um, so... Yeah. 
Yeah. I'll just clean this up, take off these plastics, and that'll also go. It's all happening, it really is. It's just amazing how quick, you know. I suppose, you know, they're desperate to uh, get on top of it before it, uh, it's going to absolutely ruin the economy. But, uh, <laughs> and businesses are getting like $5,000 grant um, and stuff. So, but unfortunately, because I'm self-employed, I don't, you know, even though I run a business, I don't employ people. So I don't qualify for any kind of grant or anything. The only way I would get um, anything would be to basically uh, shut up shop and, <laughs> and go on welfare, you know. Uh, but uh, I'm not at that point, so uh, yeah. But the pressure's on to. It's just a power board, really. Just going to clean up the wire. Pressure's on to uh, make a bit of money. Um, I haven't had any inquiries for picking up e-waste for um, for over a week. So lucky I did that. Got that big job, 100 and whatever PCs. Um, I might have to start relying on my recycler mate to uh, start um, giving me a little bit more junky PCs. Might just have to tell him, look mate, uh, you know, this is only if I start running out of work. I'll just tell him, mate, got to help me out and uh, give me some uh, some extra work I mean even if I'm buying you know I buy PCs off him that that's okay as long as there's a, a bit of a margin there um, I should be okay But yeah, because um, I can't go street scrapping, uh, they're just too too full on, and you know, as I've mentioned before, I, I don't want to be arguing with them in the streets, trying to justify what I'm doing. Um, but and this is going to go yeah six weeks, so. I tell you what, if I don't get many pickups in the six weeks, um, which I don't think I will be because uh, a lot more businesses are closing down or, you know, shutting up shop. So they're not really thinking about spending money on uh, new IT. This thing's awkward. Yeah, it's just going to be interesting. But yeah, it, it will give me a, a really great chance to um, to clear off everything I've got here, you know. And it would be amazing if I, uh, I had a clear garage and stuff and then, oh, I don't care, I'll just uh, melt some copper bars and sell sell some copper bars and um, yeah I'll make do because uh, yeah those uh, when I do a copper melt uh, the videos, when I do my video, they're pretty popular, you know, and so, well, that's, 
one way of getting a bit of revenue is uh, trying to make as many videos as, as I can and you know earn a few bucks that way <coughs> okay Well, there's our service scrapped out. I'm just going to put what clean steel I've got in there. Um, cool. done here just gonna take out these do this DVD just clean this up and Throw the rest into dirty steel. All I want here is just this little brass. That's it. That'll go. All right. So. I'll just finish cleaning this up and uh, we'll go on to a couple of oddball things. All right, so I've got this Aria 24 IP. It's, it's uh, I thought it was like a switch. It's kind of like a uh, um, telephone system. Just looks uh, really strange. So I thought I'd since it's here, it's another thing needs to be done. Thought I'd get into it. Okay. Well, at least it's loaded with stuff, you know. Even that, gold band crystal. Um, pretty decent board. Quite a bit of plastic here. Just a power board I need to clean up. Yeah, this because I get such low value for the power board, I'll probably take off this little coil as well, um, just to get a little bit extra value. Uh, oh, sp speaking of, of value of boards, um, for those people that are bringing me boards to sell uh, to me, um, I've been in talks with my buyer and, you know, just been speaking about the prices, you know, the price of gold, everything is going up, but um, 
the prices of boards have stayed the same for you know been the same for like three years um and people are or you know that are bringing me boards they're asking me you know you know well gold's gone up so much like are the boards ever going to go up you know and they haven't been and so i had to have a a good discussion with my buyer you know just try and tell him that look you know i think uh you know if me sending him boards three years ago was good enough at those prices then now that here in australia gold has gone up by a thousand dollars an ounce since then so surely um you know a thousand dollars an ounce increase surely that justifies an increase in in the price that he's paying me um i just couldn't you know and it's something that bothers me every almost every day like i'm thinking geez you know gold's up a thousand dollars an ounce that's what they're basically mostly going for and and well not just gold but what about uh palladium you know Uh, back when I first got these prices, palladium was like uh, 500 bucks an ounce, not even 400. And now palladium's um, it's priced the same as gold. So um, where's that increase? That's gone up heaps. A couple of gold band crystal oscillators, but uh, yeah, even though it's like a telecomish. But it's nowhere near telecom. It's not even a server. There are all these transformers, dead weight. Um, so, you know, it's half power board, half good board. So it's basically still just a mid grade board. <laughs> but that was interesting. Um, and the other thing, let me just zoom out a little bit. I think I'm too close. Yeah, the other thing I've got is. Uh, this is this is a strange one. Um, it looks like a giant <laughs> um, smoke alarm, but it's one of those WEP, you know, network sort of systems. Um, I, recently, I got a couple of smaller ones, and I, I thought the same thing. Oh, that's, they're smoke alarms, but they're not. So it's just like Wi-Fi. Um, a huge chunk of plastic anyway so that's what I want there's one already so it's but this has been sitting just in the doorway of the garage for a few weeks I've been mean to get around to it Just an awesome big piece out the way. Okay. Uh, yeah, almost get away with a mid-grade board. Just got to take it off this steel. Does have some interesting uh, MLCCs on there. Yeah, if I took off the MLCCs, it'll just be a pretty much just a low-grade board. So hopefully, within uh, the next couple of days, um, I get notified of uh, some better prices and yeah it's going to help everyone you know um, because I mainly buy boards well 
it's mostly to help other scrappers out, give them a, a place to sell their boards. Um, but obviously I do make a bit of money on them as well. I'm not going to do it for free because uh, I do spend a lot of time, um, you know, in buying the boards, especially if they're not very well sorted. Um, but yeah, the whole idea is, you know, to uh, is to get good prices for scrappers, so they, um, have, you know, just got a a better place to uh, sell their boards. Because uh, as I've mentioned previously, you know, I used to go to the scrapyard and see scrappers throwing complete PCs and DVDs and everything um, just in uh, dirty steel. And you know, I'd say, mate, you know, so that's why I tried to put it out there and educate people to uh, scrap stuff out and get better value. But how's this? Isn't that? That's quite pretty. It's like a big circuit board pizza. Uh, one with the lot. That's uh, pretty incredible. It's even got a ram stick. Um, <laughs> and it's really funny how they've made it. Obviously, they've had to, you know, make it to fit the the circular system. So it's basically you got the main board here in the middle. It looks really nice, gold fingers and all. And then you got four boards around the sides. To ah. Uh, oh. And the main board is going to have four. That's a strange one. So these are just sliding out. Okay. Our BGAs. Um, gold band. Uh, wow. Nice big gold band crystal oscillator there. Um, these weird things. Cirrus. So quite a, a, a good value board actually. Um, good value whole system geez I hope I get more of these they're so easy to scrap just under a few screws and away you go but you know obviously there's a lot of big plastic so lucky for me I can get rid of it um, but even these oh what's on this side I oh, know they, they look like yeah they might be sort of oh they're just sort of like a little rubber grommets um, but these a really good well plated gold pieces all right so I want to keep these take all of them off oh there goes one so I'll do that before them but totally unexpected so they're all pretty much identical all right some good gold recovery here four of them and then we've got this beautiful main board first one I've ever seen like this uh, got a ram and you know quite a few uh, gold band crystal oscillators in there but how's that? Gold fingers on all four sides. Wow. The other side, just, uh, you know, some tantalum capacitors. Um, and this. Just a big piece of plastic. But, uh, and this card. Oh, well, it's got no name, no brand. Um, yeah, tiny little battery, but RAM sticks a little bonus. Quite a good, good chunky one. Pick that. Oh, there you go. And there'll be a, another BGA under that heatsink, obviously, but a couple of good good quality BGA's um, as you can see it looks like one of the BGA's has been taken off but that's just how it is it's ready to go different configurations some need an extra one some not but uh, 
Wow, that's quite a interesting board. I'm, you know, I'm tempted to, uh, you know, I wish there was another BGA here. Just would have made it look complete. Now, I'm going to just remove the fingers, take off a few tanties, the gold band crystals, and leave it as a mid-grade board, a good quality mid-grade board with BGAs. So there you go. And, yeah, as I said, I want all of these gold jacks, especially these ones, because um, I can just tell by the colour that they're, uh, they're pretty good plated. And it just goes with the, all my other gold plated jacks and stuff. Um, to work out one day in retirement what I actually will do with them. There you go. So that was uh, quite interesting. Um, so I think uh, for now that should do it for this video. Um, I just had a feeling that the last video was a little bit too long and um, so I'll get rid of this plastic and that. Now these are all the circuit boards from the switches and stuff that um, I need to uh, work out what to you know do with. Some I sell, some I completely depopulate, some I partially depopulate, take off a couple of little things, mostly the gold band crystal oscillators and stuff, and then throw them into my tubs to resell. Oh, uh, thing I wanted to mention is uh, today I went... I don't know if you remember the uh, the 12, 13 boxes of keyboards that I had there. I threw them in there for uh, to work out. Well, I've taken them to um, one of my buyers, and he's going to try and sell them for me. Um, he's got a guy that comes. He's actually coming later on today, and he's going to see if he can get rid of them for me. So um, I, I gave him 12 boxes, so that's 120 keyboards and well you know 120 times you know just one dollar each is 120 bucks so you know if i get a few bucks each for them five bucks that'll be fantastic um so uh as you can see i got rid of all that all those little printers that's another job done all the cardboard boxes are done this is uh what i've done so far all the switches and uh this is clean pressing steel, 23 cents a kilo. And this is the dirty pressing steel, 13 cents a kilo. Um, and so whichever one comes first, when it fills up, I'll uh, start getting onto it. Uh, just restarting my plastic bin, just emptied that out, which is good. Got these, this is normally my power supply bin. Uh, <laughs> My power supplies are just sitting on the edge here because I've got to uh, start scrapping these out as well. Um, yeah, but uh, the bins are down, so that's good. I've got a lot of space, but I've still got uh, quite a bit of stuff here to go through. Um, now that we're starting to get a bit more rain, you know, I prefer to do my PCs dry uh, rather than scrapping out when they're soaking wet. So uh, I'll probably get onto these hundred and three or four PCs first up scrap all these out um, might even have to end up doing a uh, scrap metal run get rid of some cable uh, one of the boxes that was all this cable stuff I've already cleaned it all up uh, in between videos so uh, a lot getting done and uh, yeah so I've probably got to get rid of these ones first um, still got a few switches there and but most of the switches are gone uh, this is the rack the row that I really want to get rid of just this whole front three rows um, good to get rid of for, uh, during the next video so that's what I'll probably end up doing uh, if they're not too wet just all these servers just sitting there it's just a lot of weight sitting on this part and it'll just open it open it up anyway 
Yeah, still got more PCs over there. So it's it's getting there, guys. But I've got six weeks to uh, to get rid of all this stuff because uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to go out street scrapping uh, at least for the next few weeks. So I've got here. Yeah, I might even do these PCs here and. Still got five, these five servers. I, I tried to give them a ch the best chance I could to resell them. All I managed to sell was uh, uh, some of the RAM, um, a couple of batches of RAM out of them, the good ones, the 8 gig ones. So I made uh, quite a bit there. So that was pretty good. So these ones, I'm just going to scrap them out. They've been sitting there. I've just been using them as a little table. So it's been handy, you know. All right, well... There goes part two of the scrap marathon. Hope that was uh, a little bit of fun for you guys. Um, and yeah, uh, check out uh, my channel for uh, for the uh, part three of this marathon. And it's just probably going to continue on. Um, if I can think of anything, I might do a little um, time tr trial and see how long it takes me to do, uh, you know, 20 or 30 PCs or something like that. Um, see how I'm going in my old age. <laughs> Alright guys, keep scrapping and I'll catch you soon.